the Mad Enchantress beaming down from cloud 7.6 again. Um, the thing I want to talk to today, talk about today, is um, the phenomenal, phenomenon, a logical approach to thinking and being and science. Um, I've been told by an authority um, that some people in some parts of the world are performing experiments such as cloud seeding um, to try and ameliorate the situation certain parts of the world may have with um, things like crops growing, um, that they may find there is a need for rainfall that they think may be answered in the short term by cloud seeding. Um, I've been told, however, um, that the whole of the scientific approach to cloud seeding and, and to such experiments may be flawed. Um, the phenomenological approach apparently says that A, you must state in advance what result or effect you are trying to achieve. B, you must demonstrate statistical significance in the results of a trial. And C, you must be able to demonstrate that the impact achieved was via the mechanism that was initially invoked in A. So how can you really prove there is a link between cause and effect um, to, to, you know, looking at the whole thing wider, in a wider perspective. Um, you know, I know that if I go like this, my eye will appear covered on the computer screen as I'm talking to you. But the, the other day, actually, as I said, um, the computer screen uh, showed me back in slow motion. So I don't know what caused that. Um, like, you know, there are things that, like, I kind of know that if I switch on a light switch, the bulb will come on. But I don't know it for sure that it will happen every time because I don't know for sure whether the bulb will be um, bust and or that there might have been something gone wrong with the wiring or there might have been an electrical power cut across the country. Um, I don't know for sure that that experiment is going to have that effect every time, though it is something that I have relied on for a long time. Um, I want to draw your attention here to someone I found out about um, called Edith Stein, who apparently was um, a nun who was very well, I don't know whether she was well renowned actually, but apparently she was an, an important phenomenological um, philosopher. But, you know, I haven't heard of her before at all. And I'm worried and, you know, puzzled as to why she has been obscured in the history books. Um, even though she is called uh, St. Teresa as well. Um, you know, maybe some, some Catholics in some Catholic boarding schools or, um, you know, have heard of this woman. Um, but I, I haven't heard of her before at all. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, in general, it's put me into thinking in general about um, 
we know about some of the terrible and uh, oppressive effects that Christianity has had over the years um, as a kind of put down of free thinking, uh, a put down of people's ideas and, uh, you know, some patriarchal institution that is just about controlling and repressing people. But that's that's about the men's side of the church. Um, I have been wondering for a long time now what all these nuns have been up to. And, you know, maybe some of these nuns need to be plucked from obscurity and some of the thoughts uh, that they've shared um, to really be given further study and thought and attention. Um, I, I do feel that some of these nuns may have been really good people. Um, I'm also wondering about this fem phenomenological approach, like if theoretically you cannot necessarily prove any direct and everlasting link between cause and effect, whether prayer has got some significance and power um, that is not in today's society given any credence. Um, and I'm also wondering about the link between nuns and witches um, through that. Okay, well, I'll leave you for now. Hope you found this video interesting. Okay, bye.